Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. So this evening I wanted to real quickly, um, after work today, get out here and do just something real quick on the safe restoration project. I've got the casters, the wheels that I took off of, uh, off of the machine and I went ahead and took all four of them out. They all had a lot of slop and wear in them uh, where the holes just aren't round anymore. They've been worn, they got side by side slop in them. I was kind of surprised. I mean, you wouldn't think this safe had been rolled around a lot, but over the last probably 100 years, uh, there was a considerable amount of wear uh, in these casters. So the plan is, is we're gonna take and uh, bore these out oversized. I'm gonna bore them out to 5 eighths of an inch. The axle that goes to them is 3 eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna bush them back uh, with some uh, bronze bushing material. And um, just so you'll know, I, I did take these uh, the other day and, and bead blast them, every, all these cast iron parts real good in my bead blaster. And uh, I've been having some issues with my bead blaster. It, it has starting to kind of just not work well and then it quit working altogether. And I, I finally uh, got just frustrated with it and went in there and started tearing things apart, trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, let me show you this. Uh, so this is the nozzle in that bead blaster that I've been using. And it's been a good nozzle. Uh, you know, I don't know what brand it is, uh, but right here, this is where the suction pipe comes up, where the sand comes in. And if you look, there's a hole that has just worn through the aluminum or pop metal or whatever material this is made out of right there with that sand sucking in. So the abrasive power of that sand just being sucked up through the pipe when it got up to this uh, pot metal or uh, here, it just, it, it wore a hole in there. And once we got that hole in there, um, it, it, we were no longer getting that suction. The, the air was coming in from through this hole rather than coming up through the suction pipe and uh, it quit working. And I think what happened was I started with a little tiny hole uh, and it was kind of working. And then as I continued using it and really frustrated with it, it just eroded that hole out bigger and bigger until it quit working altogether. So anyway, I just throw that in. If you got a, if you got a, uh, a, a bead blaster, uh, you know, these things here, unfortunately are consumables uh, and you have to replace them from time to time. Um, you know, I, at first I thought it was a hole in my hose. In fact, we found a hole in, in a little small hole in the hose itself, the suction hose. And I replaced that and it still didn't work. And uh, anyway, that's the problem. So I was able to get another uh, 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 gun to go in the, in the blasting cabinet. And man, now it's working great. Uh, and I came in here and, and bead blasted all these. Uh, so just a little side note there, but uh, we didn't get all that done. Uh, I, I just quickly hit them with a little bit of spray paint. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna paint these better later. I'm mainly just trying to keep any rust from getting on them. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not. This hole, I mean, it's, it's bigger on one side than it is on the other. It's oblong on this side. So we're just gonna bore these out. So let's get over here on the lathe and we'll show you the process. All right, so uh, again, for those of you that may be new to my channel, uh, this is a four jaw chuck, but this is actually a scroll chuck. In other words, all four of the, uh, the uh, jaws move in and out at the same time. And it's kind of an unusual chuck. I bought this specifically for, for turning some square uh, stock that won't fit into a three jaw chuck without having to go through and um, uh, get the indicator out in a four jaw. So, but this chuck is really the, the best scroll chuck I have. I've got a, another a three jaw chuck that this on the, came with this lathe, uh, but it's, it's, so, it's so worn that I really just can't get it to work very good. So I've resorted to using this four jaw chuck for a lot of my scroll work. And uh, first thing you'll notice here too, or you may notice is, is I've got the jaws turned around backwards. And I actually, when you get a, a, a scroll chuck or really any chuck, there's usually two sets of jaws. Uh, one set is for uh, doing outside work. And if you look here, you see, uh, you know, it kind of comes down to a V down here on the bottom for gripping. But on these steps out here, this is for chucking on the inside of a piece. So if you had a piece of tubing or something and you wanted to chuck onto it, you could pull out uh, and, and chuck with that. So in this case, I've got my other set. Now these jaws here, you notice the steps are backwards. They're actually for for compression chucking on a larger piece. And that's what we're gonna do with these. So we'll take these wheels and I'm just gonna put them in here. Uh, let me get my T handle here. So we'll just put this in here and we'll just grip this in place. 
and this should get that wheel running fairly true. Uh, you know, it's, it's a cast iron wheel, it's never been machined, so they're not perfect. And I've actually put a few of these in here just to kind of test them. Uh, and one thing I've noticed too is that some of these holes that were in here were not originally drilled on center. So even that, that wheel was kind of bouncing as you went. Uh, I don't know if it wore that way or whether they were drilled that way, but regardless, um, when you look at that hole in some of these, they're, they're not running on center with the wheel. This way, uh, by chucking it up on the outside in a, in a self-centering scroll chuck, you know, it's, it's going to be running pretty true within a couple of thousands, which is plenty good for uh, a wheel on a lathe here. So, All right, so I've got the uh, part in the lathe now, and first thing you'll notice is, yes, there is some run out on this outside edge. And, but if you look down, straight down on it, the wheel itself is running through. And uh, these are rough castings. They were not machined on the outside. So what you're seeing is just the roughness in the raw casting. I'm not too worried about it. Again, I'm more interested in the, the outside diameter of that wheel running through. If I really wanted to, I could come in here and face that off. But it, it's, it's not, this is not a high speed wheel, guys. So it's, it's not something I'm too worried about. I've got a little boring bar in here. Uh, a little small diameter boring bar and we're just going to punch through this uh, so we'll just start here and uh, work our way up Instead of boring all these uh, out uh, to that final dimension, I'm just getting them close and, and I'm just going to finish them out with this 5 8 reamer. That way I know all of my boards will be exactly the same size and uh, I won't have to worry about machining each one to fit. Uh, so we're, we're pretty close. Chuck had come loose a little bit there in the, in the tailstock. So with the uh, holes now in the wheels, now I need to make the bushings to go in there. So this is some 544 bearing bronze, um, just a rod. And what we'll do is we're just going to uh, drill this out. Uh, I'm gonna, I got a reamer that's about 5 thousandths over 3 eighths, uh, which will give me just enough clearance in there to, for that to turn real well. And uh, then we're going to turn this down to just a little over 5 eighths to give us enough to, to press in there about a half thousandth oversize and uh, I'll measure those over there real good first and then we'll turn these down to fit where we can just press them right in. So let's do it. So I got all the bushings made now, and uh, they're just about a thousandth larger uh, than the piece we're going into. So uh, now we're just going to come over here to the hydraulic press and uh, hopefully just press these right in place. Yeah. 
with the bushings done now in the wheels all that's really left is to make the axle that the wheels are going to be turning on and this is kind of a rivet looking piece uh, it has just a, a kind of rounded off head on on one side and uh, it's turned down to three eighths of an inch and it's two and a quarter inches long so we'll go ahead and turn these down to size first for the axle and then I've got a little uh, tool that I've cut ground here that's got a radius in there that I can use to go in there and actually make those heads with um, and part it off after that so we'll uh, we'll get these shouldn't take long to knock this out So we got all our bronze bushings in place now. Everything's pressed in. Uh, these all fit real good. Uh, these pins uh, fit the, the brackets that we're going to go into. So now what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and assemble these. And I've got three of them. One of these feet is still broken. I've got to uh, get it fixed. It's got a piece broken on it. But I'm going to go ahead and put these three back together and we'll do the last one. Uh, when we get to that so um, we'll just start with this one and axle just goes through there like that just like the originals that's about a quarter of an inch high and uh, we're just going to take the torch heat that up red hot and uh, just kind of upset it uh, i'm not worried about getting it riveted over we just want to get it too big so it won't come back out That's it. All right, I think these are all finished up. I just need to put a little more paint on them to make sure that they don't start rusting on me. But all three of these uh, caster wheels are all nice and restored. Uh, that's uh, turning real nice now. Um, get in here, you can see that's just upset enough so that it won't come back through that hole, which is just like the originals were, exactly like that. So we just went back the same way. So we're going to call this part of the job finished. Uh, we'll have another episode later on where I uh, replay, repair that last caster and uh, get it back together. Uh, but making progress on the safe. <laughs>